Hello and welcome to HSD tutorial series. Um, today we will be going through tutorial 4 which is on Allegro board import, uh, doing post layout SI Pro simulation, post layout channel verification and crosstalk simulation. If you have not seen earlier video, I would recommend you to see tutorial 1 to 3. To get started, we will create a new workspace um, for our post layout board import and then further simulation. Uh, give the name of your choice and then make sure we don't select setup layout technology because really we don't need it. Um, the board which we will import will have all the layers technology implemented. To import any board file into ADS, go to File, Import, Design and select the desired format. In this case, we will use Allegro BRD file. Now note Allegro has to be installed on your machine. Um, we don't need license of Allegro, but uh, we will use some extracta files uh, which is there in the installation directory. Uh, click OK and then the board will be imported in a few seconds to minutes depending upon the complexity of your layout and the PC power. Now, once imported, you can see the main board design file which is nothing but the same as your BRD file name and a folder containing all the components which are there in the board file. Double click to layout and then uh, we can see the layout uh, which has which we recently imported and now we can also click on substrate editor to see the stack up definition which got imported along with the board file. Now this stack up is fully editable in case the stack up definition is not correct. We can go ahead and modify the you know stack up properties to change the metal height, dielectric height, etc. We can also add or edit the existing material. We can go to technology material definition. Uh, you can choose add dielectric to create a new dielectric material or simply use add from database to have a look at the materials available. And then we can add any of those material in the list. So in this video, I will just show you how to add one material from the database and then apply it in our stack up. But then I will revert back to the original setting. So in this case, I just selected one Isola FR408 material. And now once the material is available in the list, we can go ahead and assign that material uh, to our stack up on the, any of the layers as needed. As you can see, I just assigned Isola material. Now I will revert back to original uh, board because the current assignment is proper. Now, in order to, you know, perform a SI Pro simulation, um, you know, Sometime we need to you know, look at various nets and we can switch on two important windows, navigator window and layer window as shown here. Now this navigator window will allow you to see all the nets which we have in the design and make sure we understand what kind of nets we are simulating. By simply typing the keywords or the net names, uh, we could filter out the nets. We can select and appropriate nets will be highlighted in the layout. And then we can have um, a quick estimation of what is the board area which we need to simulate. Now often when we do these kind of post layout extraction, it could be memory intensive. And if we have a limited RAM and uh, you know processing power, we could do a cookie cutting. So we can select a net and then go to EM tools cookie cutter and define the cookie cutter boundary shape uh, to be either convex cell and bounding box. Give the separation for the cookie cutting and then it will create a new layout with a cookie cut portion. By clicking on cut, uh, a new layout will be opened with a limited geometry. And if needed, we can invoke SI Pro from this window to run post layout extraction on this smaller section. Now it is very common to see these kind of light lines because we just cut the instances and we can disable the display of those by going to set connectivity options. And now we can only see the the layout. Now in our uh, video, currently we will use the full board layout for simulation purpose. So we'll just close the window. Now to invoke SI Pro or PI Pro in ADS, we could launch um, SI PI using this icon. If this toolbar is not visible, we can right click on any of the free space in the toolbar and select HSD. So that gives us all the icons as needed. Alternatively, you can also go to tools SI Pro PI Pro and create a new setup or open an existing setup. In this case, we will create a new setup. Uh, we can give the setup some name, although you could keep the default name. But in this case, I want to be specific for CSI extraction. So we click OK and it takes a few seconds for a new SI Pro window to come up. 
And now this analyzer window has our board file and all the components, um, you know, uh, which is shown. You can also expand it uh, in Z direction to have a better view of some of the inner layers. You can use less mouth button to rotate, scroll wheel to zoom in, zoom out, and right mouse button to pan. We can also make conductors to be wireframe, which is like outline mode, uh, so that we can render it little better uh, whenever we are working with graphics, uh, heavy duty kind of board. Now the complete layout uh, with all the nets, all the components are available in this analyzer window and we can invoke any of those. Now SI Pro uses color coding, uh, black is for ground, red for power, yellow for signal and blue for unassigned. Now with this color coding, it's easier for us to see what kind of nets we are simulating. Also, there are some default uh, simulation controllers. We can delete them. And now we can go ahead and add our desired analysis. In this case, I will add power aware SI analysis and give it some name by which we want to recognize it, uh, which is quite helpful if we're going to have multiple analysis in a single window. So in this case, we will just simply call it CI extraction. Now from the nets, we can click on filter and we can type in the nets which we want. And as you can notice, all the nets which we want to simulate are blue. Now this can't be simulated for SI simulation. Now we can just right click and set the uh, net type as signal. By clicking on those, notice the color of the nets will change, um, making um, you know it clear that it's a signal net. We can simply drag and drop those nets into the analysis container, or we can do right click and select add to analysis. Now another nice thing you notice as I pro kinds of start guiding you what has been missing. So now it is reporting for a missing ground net. We can drag and drop the ground net from the available nets in the layout. Now next step is to connect the ports for our simulation. Now all the nets uh, could be selected in one shot and we can assign um, you know, ports to all of the nets in one shot. But in this case, I will just describe how to select a uh, you know, particular pair, right click and then you say, you know, place ports. And now here in this window, we can see the instances where the nets are connected to and the action which we want to take. In case our nets have some discrete components in between, it will have the option connect a component, which will allow us to connect a component. Now, as you can notice for one differential pair with the, our action, we have placed four ports. We can click on the ports and also see the placement of the port and where is the plus terminal, where is the minus terminal. Now inspecting some of these things are always advisable because a wrong assessment here will give us a wrong um, you know, simulation results at high frequency. Now we will go ahead and repeat this process for rest of the differential pairs we have like one we did. Now here again to remind, we could have selected all the nets in one shot and right click and created port, which would have resulted in 20 ports at in one click, right? Because we have five uh, differential pair here, so four port per differential pair. So now we are almost done with the last um, port assignment and we have the 20 ports under the port setup, which we can see. Now, you could select all 20 ports to see the location of their, you know, uh, plus and minus pins. Uh, you can also select the nets to see where all uh, they are placed. Now there are no component models right now because this is a plain net design. But if there was a component model, then it will appear there and we could assign them. Double click on options and define from where to where we want to simulate this net. So in this case, we are going from DC to 2 gigahertz. Double click on run and then the simulation will start running behind and then we should we would be able to see the status window. Now the simulation time will depend on how many number of cores you have on your PC, how powerful is your processors, etc. More cores will result in faster simulation. So now in this case, as you can see, uh, my five differential pair took around eight GB of RAM, and it took around 38 minutes to finish on my laptop. Now, which is quite reasonable uh, considering the, the length of the traces. Now after simulation, we could expand the results, double click on S parameter option. And here we could see S parameter response of all the nets which we have simulated. So we'll adjust it a little bit so that we have a better viewability of these responses. Now to plot response, we can simply right click on any of the ports. And then we could select option like plot through path, return loss, near end crosstalk, far end crosstalk and so on. 
By clicking on through path, it shows us the transmission of the trays. Now let's go ahead and plot return loss on the same graph. Uh, we can switch off the legend if it is interfering with our you know, traces. Uh, similarly, we could go ahead and plot um, you know, other nets on the same graph, uh, you know, whatever responses we need. Now we could select all of them and just in one click, we can plot all the through path and switch off the S11. Now we can see all the through um, you know, responses for those. Now we can also plot uh, near end and far end crosstalk very easily by just simply right clicking and selecting the option of near end crosstalk. Whenever we need to remove the plots, we can click in any empty spot and uh, just say remove the plot. Now here we are showing the far end crosstalk for our port number one. Now you could also make uh, mixed mode calculations. Now all the single ended ports are available and we can select the respective terminals uh, right click and say make differential pair. So in this case we will do it for one of the differential pairs. We'll select port number one and three and then uh, two and four to make differential pair. Now once the assignment is done we could just simply right click and say plot through path. Now this trace shows us differential transmission STD to one uh, basically as we call it. Now once we are satisfied with the results of S parameter, we could go ahead and look at TDR, TDT if required, which I'm not doing in this case, but we could double click on generate sub circuit, which basically will create a schematic uh, cell so that we could run post layout channel verification. The notice in the main ADS window, there's a new cell created, which has a suffix of underscore CSI extraction, which is nothing but the same name, um, which we gave to our analysis. So let's create a new schematic with the name channel sim. And now once the schematic is created, uh, we could simply drag and drop uh, the extracted channel. Uh, as you can see, it has a symbol onto this schematic. Just do a simple drag and drop. Notice the symbol which by default gets created from SI Pro has the net name and the you know, connection pin, making it very easy for us to you know, connect it wherever we require this in the channel. So right now we do have 10 ports on one side, another 10 ports on another side. Now for setting up a channel simulation on our extracted channel, let's go to simulation channel directory, uh, library palette, and we can place a channel controller. Now, if you have not seen channel simulation tutorial, I would recommend you to see channel simulation tutorial, which is tutorial three to understand this a little better. Now here we will have one transmission um, you know, channel. So we'll place one differential transmitter, one differential receiver on the central lane. And we can make the connection to the desired you know, pin terminals uh, for our TX and RX. Now, once we have our TX and RX, we could also you know, place the I probe as required and differential terminations as required. So in this case, we would put a differential 100 ohm termination for the rest of the four pairs in the output side. Now to make connections, we can always use a wire to draw and connect uh, the wires between terminals. However, the technique which I'm showing is pretty useful. By clicking on wire label, uh, we can give the same names to the terminals which have to be connected and different names. So in this case, as you can see, I have used 01, 02, 03, 04, and then respective connection is done. Just take a little care of not, um, you know, uh, shorting out something which you don't want to short. Now, rest of the channels, we will set up a crosstalk uh, transmitter model. So we'll place four transmission model, uh, crosstalk transmitter model. And again, using the same logic of wire label, we will make uh, connections on the respective pins as shown here. So once it is done, uh, Is a I probe, um, or we can go ahead and define the phase first. So we can go ahead and do the transmission, and all the transmitter crosstalk models will have random phase uh, with respect to our actual uh, transmission. So we'll just make every phase to random, or you could define phase at a specific phase angles with respect to transmitter. Now, and define the characteristics of my actual transmitter, which is one GBPS uh, plus one to minus one volt. Uh, we will use 100 ohm load and similarly the receiver um, we will go ahead and you know put a single ended i probe after the receiver 
and then set the exclude load to no. Now some of these things I have described in channel simulation, um, you know, video. So this, um, you know, receiver model can have different type of equalization. Um, we can define the desired load impedance, which in this case is 100 ohm. Now once we are set, uh, we can go ahead and launch simulation. And simulation will take a few seconds, again, depending on the complexity of the models uh, which you have and the amount of channel information. In the data display, we can insert a rectangular plot, add a density plot, and you can notice the impact of the crosstalk on the eye diagram. We can also insert a table to plot eye height or eye width. If needed, we can directly plot the summary, which will give us all the key measurements done by the eye probe. So notice with crosstalk, we have eye height of 776 um, you know, millivolt and then uh, 990 for the eye width. Now we can go ahead and deactivate uh, the crosstalk model just to see how our channel behaves uh, without um, the crosstalk models. And now you can see the eye height is increased by um, you know, uh, some amount and now it is 797 millivolt um, for the same. We now conclude this video. Hope this was of some help to you to understand how to do post layout extraction uh, using SI Pro and then bring the model back to schematic to do a channel validation and use a crosstalk channel model. Stay tuned for the next video in this HSD tutorial series. Thanks for watching.